there are absolute limits in which the health or the body can adapt to climate change. Everybody would agree that heat waves are not good for you. We saw the many deaths in the European heat waves, the Russian heat wave, and now we hear in the news um, more and more frequently about victims of heat waves in already hot countries like India and Pakistan. I bet that there are more than tens of thousands of victims of heat waves in already hot countries which didn't make it to the news roll or didn't make it to scientific journals. But I'm not focusing on heat waves, but I'm focusing on the slow, inexorably progressing warming. And there are, first of all, two myths I want to rectify. Some people think it just we can adapt to any temperature. It just takes time to adapt. Give people time and they will do it. This is wrong. There are absolute limits, and I will get into this in a second. The second myth is that there are some ethnic groups uh, that are better adapted physiologically to uh, heat than others. Also, this is wrong. Uh, if you have a dark skin, that doesn't help you in any way to cope with uh, heat. It helps you against UV light, but that's all. So the same mechanism, sweating, moving less, behaving differently, these are the same um, only options that every human being has to cope with heat stress. So particularly, if you live already at the limits of human physiological adaptation, let's say at 40 degree, 36 degree, and you are now increasing this ambient temperature by another 2 degrees, these people are extremely vulnerable. So it is people in already warm settings that are particularly vulnerable to additional heat. But the limits of adaptation are not only due to the direct effect of heats, but also to indirect ones. And as the author team of the IPCC, we struggled, how can we put this all in one graph to convey the knowledge that we um, derive from reading and going through hundreds of scientific articles? And here's what we came up with. Admittedly, it's a little bit complicated, but I think I can walk you through. First of all, we considered the maximum health impact that climate change could have on a scale from one to five. Five being the worst, the most serious health impact, zero being no health impact at all. The second is we said, okay, if this is the maximal health impact, let's say we can have on mental health, how much of this could we reduce, protect people from, through adaptation? And if you see that graph, you see such a segment, such a a segment of a circle and you see the red part is the the red contours is the maximum impact in the absence of adaptation and that would be reduced to the blue inner circle that is then the residual health impact the blue area which cannot be if you like adapted away and then we took this through eight main health impacts i will show them to you in a in a while and we looked at three different states of warming, if you like, or two different climate states. One is the current climate, which is, as you know, already 0.6 degrees more than the pre-industrial uh, time. Then we looked at the medium climate, which is maybe happening in 2030 in the absence of rigorous climate policy. And finally, we considered what it would be in a four-degree warmer world, something that everybody needs and should avoid. But we looked at it. So let's see the next graph. First of all, you see the different segments, the different parts of that circle. From mental health, these are the health impact groups, from mental health, malnutrition, infectious diseases, eight main groups. You see also heat in the left part of the circle. Then you see the kind of contours of the red parts. These are the impacts in the absence of adaptation. We're looking at the current climate, 0.6 degrees hotter than pre-industrial. And you see that the impacts are very small. 
and that all impacts exec except extreme events can be adapted away with maximal adaptation effort. I should stress this. Maximum adaptation effort. And you see this in the news. Inundations are very often climate-based. And this is uh, something that the world has a tough time to adapt to. So, but otherwise, if we put our minds and our money to it, we could live with the specific additional health burden of climate change. Now, if we uh, look into the future, in the 1.5 warmer world, in the next slide, you see that the picture has changed. The impacts in the various health categories have increased, have gone further outside, and there is a substantial amount of health to be health damage to be uh, remaining even in the presence of maximum adaptation. And you will guess, of course, that if we look into the four degree world in the next slide, you will see that this blue part, the residual health damage, the health damage that cannot be even under the most expensive and the most effective adaptation policies, that this uh, becomes seriously large. The message is there are health limits of adaptation. Let's not fool ourselves that the doctors or whoever can sort it out. There are limits that cannot be adapted away. The conclusions of this presentation are twofold. One, there are limits of adaptation based on human physiology and health, medical knowledge. The second is that if you go into a four-degree world, this gets completely out of control. This is something that many sectors have said, but the health sector corroborates this argument. Turn down the heat, as the World Bank says in their recent report. Turn down the heat, why we must avoid a warmer world. Thank you very much.